All right, I've been asked by a number of people, um, how do we train a salesperson to handle an inbound phone call? And why don't I have any videos of inbound phone call training? Well, I don't normally tape the uh, telephone training we do. I don't videotape it, I audio tape it. But the more I think about it, the more it might be a decent idea to videotape it because the voice tonality is a product of your body language and your voice tonality is a powerful um, a tool or not on the telephone. So maybe we'll start videoing some training. And if we do, we'll post those. But I thought what I could do today is I can give you some, uh, I can give you some rules. Okay, if you follow these rules, you will turn more phone calls into appointments. These are not rules like uh, traditional telephone trainers might teach you. In fact, some of them are exactly opposite. All right? Now, one that's probably not opposite is, number one, smile. Smile when you answer the phone. You keep on smiling no matter how difficult the seller might be. Look, I know how demanding they can be. I know how rude they can be. Kill them with kindness. Remember, they have the money. You want their money. You have the iron. They want your iron. Rule number two, listen, then answer the caller's questions. I repeat, listen, then answer the caller's questions. Remember, often the purpose of the phone call is to, is to decide who the caller will not visit. You don't give them the information they want, they're not coming to see you. Period. End of sentence. Don't sell the car. Don't sell your store. Don't even try to sell yourself on the phone. Just politely answer the question to the best of your ability. If you do this, that's all you need to do to sell you. People are calling to avoid being sold. Don't sell. Okay? Answer questions. Don't interrupt the caller. Don't badger them for their name and number early. Okay? This is contrary to what you've probably been taught. Don't believe that bullshit about someone's name being the most beautiful sound on earth. This prospect or caller doesn't care if you know their name. Don't answer a question with a question. In short, quit being the rude human being that trainers and managers have been so successful at turning polite people into by teaching them the retail automotive version of inbound telephone skills. Focus on the only thing that matters. Focus on getting the appointment not getting the contact info. If you get the contact info and the caller hates you, what good have you done? Well, I guess you can fill in a few blanks in your CRM or let your manager know that you got their name and number, but it's not going to help you set an appointment or deliver an additional vehicle. If they hate you, they're not coming to see you. Number four, listen, and don't answer any questions that the caller doesn't ask. Here's what that means. Don't volunteer information that you think is important because chances are what you think is important may not matter at all to the caller. Or even worse, you can give them information that will literally run them off. I can give you hundreds of examples. Rule five, set the appointment. Once you've answered the caller's questions, assume that the natural next step is to visit your showroom. Assume it. Read a line. Now, you don't get the lines here, but I've got six or seven lines that are simple and intuitive and powerful. They're not script-like, but they do provide structure when it comes to setting the appointment. Once the appointment is set, then the lines will show you how to ask for the contact information, including email address and mailing address. You'll get solid information. If they're coming to see you, they'll tell you who they are and where they're from. Ask for the caller's preferred. Number eight. Rule eight, ask for the caller's preferred method of communication between now and when they come in, phone, text, or email. It's polite. These young people want to be texted, not phoned. Number nine, confirm the appointment. Repeat everything, make sure they know who you are. Number 10, if no appointment is set, ask for the contact information, including the email address and mailing address. Now, the fact that you gave them all the information they asked for makes it more likely that you'll get this. And then ask for a telephone call appointment. Ask when you can call them back. Number 11, avoid using offensive or frightening terms like test drive, dealership, sell, and a bunch of others I can give you. Rather, use more consumer-friendly terms. Rule 12, don't be enthusiastic. Be polite, be professional, and proud. Enthusiasm too often translates into loud. All right, so what's the big picture? The big picture is don't do what so many people tell you to do. Get a name, get a number, get a name, get a number. Sorry, I'm in the service department. Um, I'll be busy for five or ten minutes. Let me go out into the lot and check this out. Let me call you back. Where are you calling from? Home or work? 
I mean, if you do have to go check the lot for a vehicle, that's fine. Tell the truth. But otherwise, don't give them some crap. People have hated the way car salespeople have behaved on the phone for 36 years. Probably longer than that. That's all, I, all the further I go back. Don't act like a car salesman. Act like someone who's going to help them purchase a vehicle. Acting like you're going to help them purchase a vehicle will sell you way more vehicles than any other method of behavior. You got any questions? Send them to me. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks. Turn more calls into appointments, more appointments into sales. Bye.